And now, Merlot at home. So we get this request an awful lot in the comments, in our VIP, pretty much everywhere. And they want us to make a varietal style wine. And we always say, well, it's not the process that makes a, a Merlot or a Pinot Cabernet. Noir or Cabernet or whatever. It is actually the type of grape that they use. And those grapes aren't readily available to your average homebody like they us. They don't grow here in Florida. So oh, we do know that you can get concentrates and our default saying was, well, it's always a larger amount. And recently our VIP Drew, thank you Drew, pointed out that, hey, on Amazon, you can get enough for simply one gallon. So, ba-cha! So it's a quart of red, red grape concentrate Merlot. And we'll have links to this in our description. But you mix this with water to make a gallon and boom, you have Merlot concentrate. It's not exactly the same as crushing your own grapes. I will give you that. But we have ways of making that work. Let's get started. So, Seraph, you're going to want to sanitize all your equipment in the red bucket of sanitization. That's right. I skipped to the punch. Didn't even let Brian say anything about it. Or the sanitizing vessel of your choice. Not everyone has a red one. Some have blue. Some have green. Fine. Someone had pink. That's... People have black. We don't discriminate. It's all okay. It's all good. Color does not matter here. Um, I think we're going to need a funnel. Ah, uh, yeah. We now have a funnel. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the juice and I'm going to do what we like to do and that's mix this up because, by the way, it was chilled, so it's sweating. So I just got a shower. But we can see that there is a bunch of goop on the bottom. That goop well, we want in here. We're assuming. But, it looks like goop. But it's not coming out, so I don't know. We'll see. It is sealed for your protection. Tastes like jelly. Oh my God, it really does. <laughs> well, it's, it's really good. grape juice. So. Yeah. That's why I didn't have you try it, because you don't like grape juice. Oh, that's thick. Oh yeah. They weren't kidding when they said concentrate. Now this is made, sorry, you can't see my face. Although for some of you, that might be a good thing. This is made to make one gallon, okay? It is meant to be three parts water, one part concentrate. But I do want to get all that concentrate out, because she had a point. There is quite a bit in the bottom of this. And you know, we had a hurricane come through, so everybody buys bottled water during a hurricane, right? We did too, and now we don't need it. And there's a case of it sitting on the floor over there, and Tigger, one of our cats, likes to chew on plastic, so she's been chewing on it, so it's driving me crazy. So we're just gonna use up some of these bottled water. She hasn't been chewing on the bottle, she's been chewing on the plastic that- Yeah, the plastic of the- The coating bag. The packaging. Yeah, the packaging, thank you. Words, stuff. And I'm just gonna, you know, pour some water in there, shake the bejesus out. There's a lot of bejesus stuck There's in the bottom. There's a lot of bejesus. That's why it wasn't coming clean before. Yeah, because it was too concentrated. Yeah, it, well, it settled. <laughs> so, you should never settle. Always go after what you want. This is going to be a foamy mess because of that. Yes. So speaking of foamy messes, yes, this is going to go on a tray and not in the fermentation station. Learn from our mistakes. So we can observe its chaos before we tuck it away in a cabinet and go, why is there a mess everywhere? Ah. I don't think I'm gonna get all the stuff. I don't think you are either, but it doesn't matter. But I wanna get as try. much as I can yeah. because that's a lot of the sugars there probably. Yeah. Rascal found the bottle I just threw. Yeah, when he did that, I'm like. Hear that? Okay, I'll be back. You guys, it's just a bottle. It's getting there. That there was a lot in there because that was just water, and it's yeah, it's very dark now. So it was good to not waste it. A little elbow grease, you know. There's a lot of bejesus in there. <laughs> Almost gone. I'm trying to do it swirly so that it just causes turbulence instead of shaking it. That way, I don't get as much foam because I don't I don't want the foam. Foam has caused us some serious problems around here. People have said they want to, want to see more of our cats on the show. If you'd like to see more cats, well, you don't have to watch them on this show, but you can go to Kitty Steading. It's a new YouTube channel that I have taken over that specializes in our cats. Wasn't really where I was going with that, but yes, you can totally do that. <laughs> what I was going for is, I don't think they meant watching our two cats fight over my foot no. on the floor. Plus, it's probably not the most sanitary thing to have our cats climbing on the table. Our cats are not allowed on the table, by the way. Just, just so you know. Doesn't stop them. No. But, but they're not allowed. It's verboten. 
All right, I'm gonna say I got out as much as I can I get out of that. I think you did an excellent job. Look All at right. that. That's the thing of beauty. Now we need more water. Now in this stage, we don't mind sloshing and pouring because we want to oxygenate the brew, so that way there's plenty of oxygen within suspension. So that way when we add the yeasts, they have that oxygenated environment to be fruitful and multiply. All right, at this point, I would like to mix this up. You need the solid bung. I need the thumb saver bung. Okay, so the thumb saver bung is just a solid stopper. And I just do that so that, you know, you can just keep your thumb on it and I can give this a shake. See, there's a lot of stuff in the bottom. That's why I wanted to do this. Just to get it mixed through. I'm going gentle because foam, it's a thing. I know the saying, don't fear the foam. I'm familiar with that. It refers to sanitizer though. This isn't really sanitizer. And the foam can really get in your way and cause problems. So that's why I'm trying to uh, minimize it, so to speak, and still get some air in there. Yeah, I think that's pretty good for now. All right, now I'd like to go on record as saying something. This is a recreation of a commercial style or a varietal of wine. And because of that, we're actually trying to do the best product we can rather than the simplest method, okay? So we're gonna be using a few things that we've used in recent videos, but we don't necessarily use all the time and they aren't 100% necessary. But for making this style or trying to make as close to a commercial product as possible, it, it helps, okay? So the we are also unfamiliar with this particular product as this is the first time we're using it. So we don't know how much nutrients are actually inherent in this right. concentrate, if it's pre-tannined, all it this is good not. information. I looked it up. This is not pre-tannined, okay. but it does have a lot of pectins okay. as well. So they do recommend some of the stuff that we're going to be doing. So what I have here is Fermato, just about two grams in some water. And to make my life easy, instead of trying to pour it in there, I'm gonna put everything right in here. This is pectic enzyme. Now, this is optional, okay? Pectic enzyme is going to help break down some of the pectins that are in the juice itself and help it to clear down the road. And I need half a teaspoon for one US gallon, which is what I have here. I'm gonna pour that right into the water for the nutrients. In addition to that, I'm also gonna be using some powdered wine tannin. Now, you know, if you don't want to use powdered wine tannin, you can always use just a cup of strong black tea. No problem. We actually did a video on that where we showed the differences and they were pretty minor really in the grand scheme of things. Um, this we, is just easier. So if you're going to use tea, you want to stick to just black tea and not a flavor tea because we're only using this for its tannic aspect, not a flavorant, okay? Right. So that's very important. Because we're trying to replicate a Merlot, a flavored tea is going to just Alter that. Alter that, and it won't really be a Merlot style beverage anymore. It might be perfectly fine, but it won't be what we're going for. Right. I am use. it says to use a quarter to a half teaspoon. Now I think Merlot, what I remember of Merlots, I haven't had a store-bought one in a while. They're very tannic. They have a, a nice strong mouthfeel, so I'm gonna use the half I'm airing on the side of larger. And yeah, you saw that, I almost knocked it over. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna mix this up. Wow, that's just, It's. that's gross. Muddy. <laughs> yep, it's mud. That is exactly what we made. Do you need the funnel again? I'm gonna need the funnel again. It's sitting right there. It's oh, right in front of the bottle. Hiding. They can see it. I couldn't. <laughs> and um, part of the reason why I don't have all the water in yet is because I know this is gonna stick all over that funnel when I try to pour it in there. So, you know, but it's sticking, sticking to the, the whisk of unusually small size, also known as the wuss. I mean, come on, how can you not love a thing like that? It's just awesome. So I'm just gonna pour this right in. Whoops. See, we got some goop. We so got leavens. I'm going to uh, add a little bit more water. Now, this is something that I want to talk about is that a lot of these things are sort of optional. Um, I mean, you could just take the concentrate, add water, add yeast, and probably make a pretty serviceable product. Notice I said serviceable. I didn't say it would be great. It may be, but I don't think so. Um, there is the trifecta of flavors and balance, which is acids, tannins, and sweetness that all add up to a better product in the end. So that's why we're trying to adjust those things. The acids are present already in the fruit juice, so that's fine. The sweetness is also already in the fruit juice. So we just had to adjust the tannic level, and I, I guessed, I'll be honest, I, I totally guessed. 
went on the high side. I don't think it's going to make a tremendous amount of difference, and you can always add more if you really want to, but I don't know that we need more in this case. We tend to like tannic wines, though. Yeah. We like that rich mouthfeel. Yeah. Okay, so at this point, now, add more water. Okay, we have foam. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put in the yeast, all right? And we're going to do that so that I can use the water to rinse it off and that sort of thing. Today, we're going to be using the Beast Lalvin 71B. Now, why are we using Lalvin 71B? Well, that's a good question, Brian. The reason why we selected 71B for our yeast for this particular product is that we did research. That's right. We went online. We Google food. Thank you very much, Kenny. And we figured out that there were some certain yeasts that were suggested for Merlot-style wines. Yeah, we didn't have some of them. One of them was EC1118, though, as a nice rounded, and I was like, oh, well, you know, we don't have that one, but we do have the Red Star version. But then I saw 71B on the list because of the, uh, it tends to make things taste more aged more quickly. It, it prevents extra maturation being necessary. How's that? Does that sort of make sense? And it gave uh, like a boldness with esters and things like that. And I was like, you know, we have it. We know it works well. Let's go for it. Um, so I don't really know what the gravity of this is going to be yet. <laughs> That's one thing they didn't really specify. But I just want to show you something. Look at how that tore. So lovely. Without the use of an implement such as scissors. Hey, Red Star, did you see that? I love your yeast. Hate your packages. Okay, and I'm going to use, I'm using the whole packet. Right. Why? Because why not? So I'm going to pour it right in. And touch the sides. It'll also get rid of some of the foam rather quickly. And what am I going to do? Thwack your packet! We make a joke on that, but you know, it's really true. There's a lot of yeast coming out of here. It just gets stuck inside and all that, so yeast in. Now, because we have this foam layer, our yeasts are just kind of hanging out on top of the foam. That is not where we want the yeast. We want the yeast inside the brew. So we're going to pour more water in there, hoping that is going to help those yeasts get down in there so they can get to work. We also need more water because we're not there yet. Yeah. One of the cats was playing with the plastic. Okay, so now is when I always say, how greedy do you want to be? It's going to be a little risky on this one. Because uh, technically speaking, we need this last one to be a full gallon here, okay? Even though I know from a previous test that we did... We're pretty darn close. We're really, really close to a gallon already. So we're going to do some of it. I don't want it to overflow. It's going to anyway. Okay, I happen to know that that is a gallon on this, pretty much. I mean, it's... That close. So we're going to go with that for now, and let's take a reading on this. Now, when I say a reading, I mean a gravity reading, specific gravity, specifically. And what that does is it gives us, A, an idea where we're starting at, and B, it tells me if I'm going to overpower my yeast, since I didn't actually did check Did you on. adjust the, the top? I did. Okay, beautiful. Got to be careful of the bulbs on the master basters, because if they go crooked, it doesn't suck properly, and it just sucks. It does have the Merlot color. Not surprising, because it's Merlot grapes, you know. Now our VIP Drew, who recommended this, he's already brewed his, and he is head over heels in love with it. So we're hopeful that we will have a similar experience. It's a little on the high side. Do we need more water? Yeah, it's a 1.154. Uh, no, thank you. I have to risk the foam. We have to, because 1.154, that's a little high. I really don't like to start with gravities that high. Granted, we have nutrients in there. It's a good concentrate that we used. You know, we have a good grape juice, that kind of thing. We have lots of good environment for the yeast. I don't think 71B can actually go that high though. Let me, let me do some checking on that. Part of the reason why we don't want the sugar level at, in their original reading to be very high is because an excess of fermentable sugars in our brew can actually stress your yeast. So if this went to dry, which Merlots are generally on the drier side, that is 20, almost 21%. Um, uh, no. 71B on its best day probably can't reliably do that. So I'd like to get this down a bit more. I have a feeling we're going to have a sweet Merlot. Now, one thing that I haven't considered, too, is I didn't mix this. Oh, you probably got a false... That's possible. Here, let me I threw in some more water. Let's just give this a... 
little mixy mix or a shaky shake. And this is a good lesson for you at home. If you ever take a gravity reading and your preliminary math when you're creating your recipe or the recipe that was created for you, if you use one of our recipes, and your initial gravity reading is a little off. Like way off? More than more than 10 points. Perhaps you need to shake it more because you might have an uneven distribution of the fermentable sugars and the additional water. Yeah, there's nothing more terrifying than making a video where you put like three pounds of honey into a mead and you take the reading and it's 1.040. That's happened, I hate to admit, on more than one occasion. <laughs> but we are seriously multitasking here. It did not. It went way down. See, mixing. That was the key. 1.070. Okay. That's much more in line. It's going to be a little bit on the weaker side for a wine now because 70 points is going to be... Well, actually, no, that's, that's about right. Um, 7, 0.7 times 135. It's going to be 0 0.07 times 135. It's going to be 9, 9.5%. That works. It'll probably go a little bit below zero. It's a wine range, so yeah. that's fine. It's wine-like. It's wine adjacent. No, it, 9 to 15% is typical for wine. So. And Merlot isn't known for being like a super high. I think they range anywhere from like 9 to 12 or so in general. So I risked a little bit extra and lowered the gravity just slightly. Just so you're aware. Not necessarily a bad thing, but I could have probably got, you know, an extra half a percent or one percent out of it. Not a big deal. So, let me start taking some notes, because I haven't written down a thing. And while you start taking down notes, I'm going to prepare an airlock. Okay, so, airlock and stopper. The easiest way is to dry these out, but I see, here's the problem. If you start putting cloth or whatever around there, unless that cloth was sanitized, in which case it's wet, you really can't dry that out properly. So usually I just add a rubber band and it's not the end of the world. It's totally okay. Eventually it will dry and then you don't need the rubber band anymore. But um, I think that's all we need to do on this for today, right? So what are we going to do with it now? We're going to let it sit. See in a week or two when this starts slowing down. That doesn't mean it's done. It just means it's the next step. It's been nearly two weeks. Bubbling has pretty much stopped, so time to take the first check and see if this is done, where it's at. Did it stall? Is it still going? We don't know. 0.994. Now, you might think, oh, well, it went below 1.000, it's done. Well, it probably is, but there's no way to know for sure until you wait a week, take another reading. So I'm going to pour this back in because all this stuff was sanitized, and I'm going to dump this right back in carefully. We're going to put the airlock back on. I took a note. I'll stick my note back on. This goes back in the fermentation station for another week, and we will see you then. Okay, the Merlot has been sitting for like three weeks between its first reading and today. Why? Well, you know, life gets in the way. We were both really sick. And also, I thought, mistakenly, that we had already racked and oaked this. So it was because it was behind something and I couldn't read the label. So it's been sitting. And just further proof that it doesn't really matter. I mean, it, it's totally okay. We're gonna take its second reading today, and we're gonna oak it from here. So really all we did is lost a couple weeks of process time. Take a reading, just like we always do. Hydrometer, graduated cylinder, and the master baster. Okay, last time it was 0.994, this time it is 0 0.994. So it's done, which means we are ready to rack this. There's another step we're gonna do after we rack it, but let me take some notes first while I'm thinking of it. And may as well do a calculation using the calculator teacher said I would never have handy. That just happened to be right there in my pocket. Let's figure out the ABV of this wine. So we started with a 1.070 because remember I didn't mix it well and then added more water and then mixed it and it went really low. Yeah. I mean, really low is not is a relative term. 1.070 is a perfectly fine starting point. Minus 0.994 means we used up 76 points, 0 0.076 times my coefficient of choice, which is 135. If you're not sure why I use that, we do have a dedicated video explaining exactly why. Suffice to say, it's a little bit more accurate. And that gives us 10.26%. I mean, that's that's in the range for wine. So I'm going to mark that as 10.2%. Works for me. Uh, just so you know, wine can range anywhere from like 9 to about 14 or 15%. So, you know, it's on the lower side, but you know what that means? Have two glasses. Okay, so let's move this from this fermenter into another fermenter. Which that is means... called racking, and we have a video on that. So I'm going to link that video in the description below, and with the magic of editing, we'll be done. Ta-da! <laughs> okay. So we went there. All right, so what we did is we racked it and now we're going to be oaking this. And I didn't even think about it. There was no question, French oak. 
without a doubt. I mean, Merlot, French oak, just kind of goes, even though Merlot is Italian. So wh whatever, we're mixing our metaphors here. I am okay with that. So what we've done is we took our block of wood and we put it in some hot water. If you're curious where we get our wood from, it comes from barrel char wood products. Derek, I can put a link below. Ken over there is a great guy. If you tell him what you're making, tell him that we sent you, he'll help you. I mean, even if you don't tell him that we sent you, he'll help you out and tell you exactly what is the, the right product for you. All the wood that we used in the last, what, year, maybe two, yeah. has come from him. Phenomenal products, fantastic customer service, just an amazing guy, love them. Give them all your money, buy all the wood you can from them. <laughs> Really, really great stuff. We actually have to warn him now when we're making a, a brew using some of the more rare stuff. Like he said the French oak was not actually not a very popular one and we made it popular. So I, I think that's kind of cool. Amberon is another one. They have lots of that in stock. He just told me um, in an email. Anyway, today we're using French oak medium plus toast. They actually come in a couple different toasts. So this is medium plus toast. <sighs> there we go. Are you going to use your fingers or do you want Tongs. I'm gonna use my fingers. That was boiling water. All right, you ready for this? Do you want me to do it? No, I'm going to do it. Okay, you let it sit in the water for about five minutes. What that does is it releases a little bit of the excess tannins and it's, it sanitizes the wood. So I'm just gonna really quickly grab the wood, throw it in there. Didn't even hurt that time okay. much. <laughs> so the next thing you do is to put a lid on it with an airlock. Yeah, you, we basically just put it into a different container. Now, if you're wondering why we put it into a wide mouth, mostly because, well, we didn't want some um, extra headspace, but also that wood doesn't fit in the narrow neck one, so you gotta put it in this. So I have my notes, I'm just gonna stick. It's wet, oh, it, it's wet. I did the glass, I didn't do the top. Yeah, you gotta dry the whole thing. He the changes tape where he puts it, just to keep me on my toes. If she dried one side, I'd dry it on the other. Yeah. It's just, I'd put it on the other, that's just the way it is. And, uh, Put my note back on, and what are we gonna do with it now? Well, that's it. I don't really know how long. I think we might let this go for a week and taste it. Okay. I've heard varying reports. People say a week, some people say two, some people say three. Now, this is an interesting thing about wood aging. It's very to taste, first of all, and it really depends on your brew, the amount of alcohol, the temperature, the type of wood you're using, the size of the wood you're using, and the shape of the wood you're using. If you're using wood chips, it's gonna extract a whole lot faster. Um, some of the spirals and things, they have a lot of area. They extract pretty quickly too. By the way, I'm not a huge fan of the spirals anymore. I feel like they're a lot cheaper of a quality. Well, seem to what happened well. is we started with the spirals. I'll, I'll try to make this as quick as possible. We started anyway. with the spirals yeah. and we're like, meh. And then we found Ken and and Ken spoiled us. And now we're just like, I won't there's no looking back. It's yeah. 109% barrel jar. Yeah, I've products. tried chips too. And I think they just give too woody of a taste. Whereas honestly, Ken's stuff, and he doesn't pay us or anything. No. He sends us products sometimes, but he doesn't pay. So this isn't a sponsored ad or anything like that. No. The products are just that kind of good. I mean, you guys know us by now. If we like something, we're going to tell you how much we like it. And if we don't, we talk about it kind of like that scotch that now, I use. Now, I know that you are noticing the activity here in the airlock. It's now, just degassing. That doesn't mean that it's fermenting. It means that it's degassing. And it also means that the temperature change of the boiling hot wood that Brian put in here could be causing a bit of a reaction. Yeah, it's degassing. Uh, but it's degassing. And I'm pounding on the table and making all kinds of... He's, see, look. See, he's being obnoxious as he tends to be. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we will see you uh, in a week. A week, maybe two. Not sure yet. See you then. Okay, so we lied. We said a week. It's been two. <laughs> Life happens. But we're going to remove the lid. Given olfactory and visual examination. It's dark. It's very dark. The question was, how much wood is too much wood? Is it in there long enough? So what we're going to do is we're going to do a tasting of this. And try not to break any glasses. I just want to put the lid back on just so... Nothing falls in. Or... It is super dark. But it's actually quite clear. It cleared out. I can see it around the edges. The color though, it is like, I mean, it looks like a Merlot. Okay, that, that's what a Merlot is supposed to look like. I can actually see my finger through it in the light. So yeah. Okay. She already smelled it, so. Oh, wow. It smells like 
Merlot. It's, I mean, it really does. It smells fantastic. This is what a, a high quality red wine should smell like. It's got those really deep, dark fruit notes. Yeah. But like almost a chocolate note too. Yeah. It's, it's funny. This actually kind of reminds me of our mulberry. Yeah. That we did. Yeah. The mulberry wine. Yeah. It's a stronger smell. Um, a little more, I, I get more sweetness off of it, even though this is really dry. This is 0.994. All right. I'm going in. <laughs> oh, wow. It is beautifully tannic. There's yep. like some potent tannin in there. But it's not too much. But it's beautifully so. It's like just right. Yeah. They are. Bottle this. <laughs> now. <laughs> it's got, as it, as it comes in, there's like a lot of deep, rich fruit in the mouth. Tons of body, tons of, uh, it, it's not super viscous, but it's got a, no. a good amount of viscosity. Yeah. A little bit of pucker, but not too much. So the tannins are definitely there. It almost is like a warming effect. Oh yeah, definitely. And the finish is nice and long. There's a good fruit note throughout. This is wonderful. Mm -hmm. This is really good. All right, so here's here's what we need to do. I drank all mine. Yeah, we oh, need more. Oh no. The aroma is just yum. If you are familiar with Merlot as a wine, you will love this. Right? Well, not familiar. If you like Merlot as a wine, you'll you'll love this. I can see why Drew was so happy with it. Yeah, one of our VIPs really turned us on to doing this, and he's he's right. He's made this three or four times now. I don't blame him. I don't think he oaks it as long as we did. I think he said like three days or a week or something. He'll, he'll probably correct me, because he comments here all the time. But... I didn't mean that in a mean way. No, no, no. I, no. He'll probably no. tell me. He'll, he'll keep us appraised in the situation. But I, I like perhaps the slightly over oaked in this because I don't think it's over oaked. I've had Merlots before and this is this they are an oaked wine. But it has a very distinctive tannic aspect to it that we we haven't noticed in our other brews and it might just be simply this particular wood with mm -hmm. the Merlot grape what what's the varietal yeah. is just Merlot. Merlot. Okay. It makes me want to see if we can get more varietal uh, we can Totally, and I Great. think we're going to. This this, this came out so wonderful. I love this. We do have to put a score on it, though. You know what my favorite thing to do with Merlot is, by the way? I put it in tomato sauce for for yeah. pasta. It just because it doesn't add sweetness, but it adds like this little bit of fruitiness. And it's it's like almost an earthy yeah. thing yep. going on. It reminds me of the earthiness and coffee and chocolate, which is I think yeah. my brain. Yeah, is you're saying me. the chocolate. Like a dark chocolate, like oh, yeah, a, yeah, yeah. a like hundred yeah. percent cacao dark chocolate. Good stuff. Yeah, a lot of people think we're crazy, but I actually eat that, mm -hmm. like, like candy, you know, because it's know. medicinal. Yeah. Um, a number. Score? Okay, I'm, I'm. All right, our scoring I'm, system goes from one through ten. Ten being the highest, one being the lowest. One is probably complete crap, and you probably dump it out and pretend you never made it. Ten is. The best of the best, except for when you have an 11, which is like the best of the best of the best. Everything in between goes from ick to aw, some, and you know, that's just the way it works. Also, just remember, one score doesn't necessarily compare well to another. It's like the that Drew Carey show, Whose Line Is It Anyway? We just make this up as we go. However, we do put a lot of thought into these scores, but just because we gave one thing an 8.5, another thing an 8, don't think that it's that much better. They're probably realistically much the same. Right. We so, can taste this today and give it one score, taste it tomorrow and give it a different score. Yes, because your palate is going to change from day to day based on your mood, based on what you've yep. eaten, what you haven't eaten. Uh, we try to be unbiased if we can, but it's very, very difficult. So yeah. usually within a point or two is probably the right range. So take that as you will. So today we are judging this as we would a Merlot. So we're putting it in the Merlot category. I am judging this against commercial Merlots that I have had. Right. So we know that it should be dry. So we're not going to take sweetness into consideration because right. it, there shouldn't be. Yeah. This would taste sweetness. weird if it was sweet. Yeah. I mean, I'd like it better, but it would be weird. Right. It wouldn't be Merlot anymore because Merlot right. has to be dry. All right. Are you ready? I'm ready. One, two, three, nine. nine. Point five. <laughs> She's so happy. She went higher than me. I really like it. Yeah, honestly, this is fantastic. 
Why didn't I go higher than nine? Because Merlot is not my favorite kind of wine. That is the only reason, because for me, from an enjoyment standpoint, I'm not likely to pour a glass of this and just enjoy it. Which is fine by me, because I will. Would I have this with a meal though? Yeah, absolutely. I'd oh, have, yeah. you know, I'd put like one of these kind of glasses. That's about as much as I really would want to have. She'll drink a little bit more of it. Fantastic stuff though. I mean, compared to any commercial Merlot I've ever had, it's this lovely. stacks up, it's if lovely. not better than, so. People are gonna be throwing stuff at us. They're gonna still see it, but this why? Is, I don't know. It's a thing. Why would they? They can't. Well, it's hard to throw things at us because <laughs> there's a camera and there's a <laughs> monitor between us and them. So if they throw something, it's probably gonna hit their own monitor. We will never know. But we were very hesitant to do this because we we're like, oh, it certainly can't be that good. And Drew's like, it's awesome. And we're like, okay, Drew, we're gonna do it because you said it was awesome. I mean, don't get me wrong. Drew, it's not the best thing we've ever made, but it's very, 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 very right. good. It, it was awesome, and I'm super excited to experiment with more varietal. Yeah, grape. yeah. To me, it felt kind of like working a kit, even though it's not, because it's right. just a juice. Yeah. We literally just used a type of juice to make this. Fantastic stuff. I mean, I wonder if you can get varietal apple juices to make ciders. Wait, can you get peri pear juice? Probably. You... That See, that's what we need to find out. If anybody knows of sources where we can get this stuff in the U.S., probably, because shipping it overseas would be very difficult. Yeah. Uh, let us know. What we're going to do with this now, though, is we're going to rack this into bottles. They're going to put it away. One of them will sit for a year, one of them's going to sit for two years, and I have high hopes for both of those. Because keep in mind, this was started October 27th. Today is December 15th. This is six weeks old, and it tastes that good already. Have we announced the ABV for this? It's 10.2. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's that's in that's the reasonable. range for, for Merlot. So Merlots can range anywhere from like 10 to 13 or 14. Something like that. Um, yeah. So we're going to say goodbye, but if you want to see how to bottle, we have videos on bottling, I'll put it in the description below. Absolutely. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.